the peace economy, we remember, we create, and we cultivate, and um, we we remember the sense of belonging to each other. But in the war economy, it to survive, it has taught us, it has forced us into addictions. And those addictions, I wish I could show you, um, uh, I've pulled out like 23 of them. And they're, um, they're addiction, oh, thank you, finally. <laughs> uh, can you see this? Yes. Yes. Oh. So it's a piece. Yes. So um, those are addictions are how we learn to survive in the war economy. Um, a space that takes us away from ourselves, that creates individualism instead of self-responsibility. And so the addiction is also like a proxy instead of life. It is not something that nourishes us or um, uh, creates a fulfillment inside of us. It's something that takes us away from ourselves and creates isolation. And um, that we know right now is one of the great diseases of our time is loneliness. I was just with the Surgeon General of the United States of America and he said one in three people is lonely. That is a disease that is killing us. It is also the soil, the fertile soil for fascism. So, you know, I say that um, the war economy has created a coming tsunami of uh, global inequality, global climate change, uh, fascism, and um, with coming AI, we will be, if we are not rooted in ourselves, we will be just used by the war economy as we are used by it right now. So I pulled together like 23 ways that we uh, addiction has been created at us but we can practice our way out by practicing the tenets of a peace economy. Peace economies have existed for tens of thousands of years. It is the economies of all indigenous communities. And so if we practice the peace economy uh, practices, we will be creating a future that is beautiful, that is nourishing, that is caring. And so, you know, from alienation to connection, from self-directed to community engaged, from competition to interdependence, from transactional to relational. This is one of the biggest ones we live inside of. We have forgotten how to be relational. We, are, we don't even recognize how transactional we are. You know, from quantity to quality, from distraction to attention, from productivity to engagement, um, from us versus them to all of us. And we can see that from us versus them has created a genocide that um, is hard to even breathe these days as, as we witness. So from scarcity to abundance, we live on a planet that is generous and abundant. So the space of generosity that we live inside of, the space of the gift that we live inside of, of just the way the planet gives to us and how a mother gives to a child, that is reality, but we have been light into another reality that we that are these addictions that we live out of. So when I say when in distress, practice a peace economy habit. In the practicing of these habits, what comes up is grief. The grief of the realization of the world we have lived inside of, the grief of the realization of what we have given our life to. But um, we live as, as um, we know the importance of care. We live inside of a cycle of reconnection that I probably practice nine times a day, that we move from grief to care, to joy, to celebration. And, and so in, in the space of grief, it's a, that is a window into love. It is love, it is reconnection. And our cultures don't allow the space of grief, but it is super important to grieve, to care, and then to move into joy and celebration. And these are rituals that should be part of every day. We've also been able to been taken away of the rituals of life. All indigenous cultures understood ritual and the value of it because it is the remembering of who we are, of alive human beings in relationship to an alive earth. And in these rituals, we become human again. So there are also capacities in the peace economy, like cultivating community, listening, we've forgotten to listen, mapping, where are we? 
Where are we in where we live? Where are we in ourselves? Where are we in relationship to each other? Organizing, how do we be together, organizing uh, the future? Because the war economy is taking us to death, the peace economy is our future. Um, I say, you know, all those things I mentioned, they're a coming tsunami. We cannot stop them. Even at Good Pink, what we do is we know we can't end war, but we scratch at power, we shine a light on it, we expose it so that others can re recognize the structure that has hold of them and transform and change. So um, it is up to us, it's up to each one of us not to be uh, distracted by the war economy, but be engaged in creating the future. Um, we have an ecosystem on the website of, of all the thousands of ways the peace economy is expressing itself and stories where we seed inspiration so we can be finding each other. So how do you engage in the peace economy in your life? You do, we each do, but we need to make it a priority and we need to make it what we do with most of ourselves is to be engaging in a peace economy. Um, so there are many, this, these you are have in the, one minute. Yeah. These are in the United States. So gather your community, ground and culture. Culture is rich and beautiful and a peace economy is not the culture we wanna be living in. Um, we need to be living in a peace economy culture. I'm sharing in the chat, um, the two websites you can go to. There's a free book you can download. Um, there's uh, an ecosystem you can engage in. There's a whole section on care and grief and joy and celebration where you can find nurturance, inspiration, and there that to be reminded that culture and each other are where we find our fulfillment. We need to reground ourselves to not be used by the war economy and to be creating the future of peace. Oh.